welcome back to another mellow video. Oh boy, do we got a nice and juicy one today. Oh, oh, and before we get started, if you're new here, this channel is all about random interesting topics at this point. Everything to satisfy that 3 a.m. craving. Yes, these videos are... Okay, what happened here? Never mind. As I was saying, these videos are best enjoyed with some hot soup, though I don't discriminate when it comes to snacks, so grab a cookie if you'd like. There we go again, mellow, yapping about stuff, not making sense. What are we even talking about today? Oh, am I glad you asked. We are going to be talking a whole lot about, you'll never guess it, soup. And no, it's got nothing to do with that guy over there. Super time! Excalibur! We'll save that bit of channel lore for some other day, I promise. Soup-Tem Excal is just going to be helping me throughout today's video as we explore the origins of soup and its many forms throughout human history. From ancient China to 18th century France, wheat to modern day stuff you find in cans and boxes and whatnot. Also, I'm gonna try to get that guy to talk, we'll see how it goes. And um, yeah. I mean, now would be a great time for a sponsor ad actually, but we don't got one of those. And I'm broke, so um, enjoy this little commercial made by one of our Discord members. Do you have the big sad? Introducing Methe. My problems have vanished. Now available in your local alleys. Alright, before we get on the roller coaster and journey through soup history, we gotta make sure we know exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, I thought we were talking about soup, Mello? Yes, but what is soup? Well, according to Google, soup is defined as a liquid dish, typically savory and made by boiling meat, fish, or vegetables, etc., in stock or water. Makes sense, right? But if you were to stretch that definition even just a little bit, something like tea could even be considered leaf soup. Well, not really, but you get what I mean. Soup is what you like it to be. Let's just leave it at that to keep everyone happy, alright? As for the word soup itself, it is believed to have been derived from the French word la soupe, which comes through vulgar Latin, supa, meaning bread soaked in broth. I don't know, I guess some guy at the time accidentally dropped his bread into a broth, looked at it, and went, oh, soup. It's a little difficult to pinpoint the exact time period when soup came into existence because of the almost random nature of its creation. I mean, drop almost anything into a pot of boiling water, find someone brave enough to consume it, you got soup that's just waiting to be named. With that said though, according to soupmakerguide.co.uk, yes, that is an actual site, and various other sources, the earliest soup dates back to sometime around 20,000 BC in Shanrendong or Shanren Cave, China, where researchers discovered ancient pottery that showed signs of scorch marks, which according to them, suggests that the pot must have been making hot soup. Cause what else could you be cooking in a pot in some secluded cave? Methe? Mr. V. Now, everything gets a little more complicated when you consider the fact that boiling in pots wasn't the only known method to ancient soup makers. What do you do if you don't got pots? Well, it's pretty easy actually. You just start by digging a hole in the ground, line it with animal skin, toss a couple of hot stones from a nearby campfire, and start boiling some water. And once you got boiling water, anything that goes in gets souped, if you know what I'm saying. I think it's safe to say that soup has been a part of humanity since y'all first discovered how to make water go... Alright, Mello. There are so many different types of soup in the world today, but what was the first ever soup recipe? Well, unfortunately, it was not chimkin, I'll tell you that. It was likely some form of watery gruel, though. What's a gruel, Mello? Doesn't sound very soup time. Well, it's basically roasted cereals that were ground to a paste and then boiled with additional water. Doesn't sound too tasty if you ask me, because it was probably like cereal with water, but with the consistency of runny oatmeal. Yeah, I don't think even you would approve of that, right? Anyways, the great thing about soup that allowed it to evolve throughout human history is that you could pretty much throw in almost anything and it'll work. Or you could make it work. For example, if you were to live in a region where vegetables were grown in abundance, then you'd probably have a few more beans and broccoli in your soup, compared to some boy living in Brazil, I guess? I'm pretty sure there's soup in Brazil. Soup is like the best thing ever. It can take many forms, flavors, textures, consistencies. I mean, it's so versatile. You can't get rid of soup. 
Even in the early Middle Ages, when food was scarce, soup played an important role in feeding the masses. I'd even go so far to say that it probably saved humanity, because people could make soup with just about any ingredients they had, like leftover meat, herbs, bones, and this meant that soup was cheap enough for the poor to afford and oftentimes filling, with more refined versions incorporating more expensive ingredients being fit for serving to the rich. So everyone from different walks of life can enjoy soup. <laughs> Isn't that great, Axcal? Time. Exactly. Now, fast forward a couple of centuries into the 1600s and 1700s, and I'm gonna tell you how the French got involved with soup and led to the creation of the modern restaurant. And no, I'm not talking about fast food chains like Wendy's, just restaurants in general. In 16th century France, merchants and vendors in the streets started selling soups that were advertised to be restauratif or having healing abilities, an antidote even to physical exhaustion. According to soupmakerguide.co.uk, again, a Parisian entrepreneur known as Bolanger invested in a shop that used to serve soup, restauratifs, and eggs. As such, the word restaurant became attached to a place where you could go to buy and eat ready food. In other words, restaurant equals place for soup time. The first luxury restaurant was also opened in France in 1786. It paved the way for gastronomic cooking styles. This went ahead to define soup from its region. Clear soups were referred to as consommés or bouillons, while thick soups were classified as purees, velotes, and bisques. Now let's jump over to America. During the colonial times in 1794, another entrepreneur by the name of Let's see. <clears throat> Jean-Baptiste Gilbert Peplat de Julien, a refugee from the French Revolution, opened an eating establishment in Boston called the Restaurateur and became known as the Prince of Soups. He gets a little cranky sometimes when I say that. As tools became more advanced and precise, alongside intricate and even artistic cooking methods, soup just got better and tastier. It had pretty much solidified its existence at that point and is here to stay. You can't get rid of soup. Soup is inevitable. And another great man by the name Dr. John T. Dorrance realized this fact. When he was working for the Campbell's Company around 1897, which at the time was already producing canned vegetables, condiments, meats, and of course soups, Mr. Dorrance found a commercially viable way to put more soup in than tiny little cans by way of having the quantity of the heaviest ingredient, water. Not sure how this helped the company, but it probably cut down costs somehow somewhere in the production line. And that's probably why Campbell's is still around these days. Give people more soup, you get more money, everyone's happy, alright? Easy. And as manufacturing processes made advancements, this eventually led to the invention of dried soup in the 20th century. Bouillon cubes were the first versions, and then people started drying up other stuff, like noodles and vegetables, put them all together in convenient packages, and created cheap, wonderful things, like cup noodles. Nissen Foods of Japan is the first company responsible for cup ramen noodles, by the way. What could the soup of the future look or taste like? The truth be told, I have no idea. And neither does that guy. I think. Hey, Excal, what do you think soup is gonna look like in the future? Okay, let's just. Alright, I hope you boys and girls learned a thing or two about soup. Am I forgetting something? Oh, yeah, one more important question Do you eat or drink soup? Well, according to ilovesoup.net, which is real, I swear I don't own these websites. While soup's defining characteristic is its liquid, etiquette experts say we eat soup, as opposed to drinking it because it is part of the meal. Consistency, preparation, and ingredients do not usually make a difference in how it is consumed. I mean, some of you out there are probably really creative, but yeah, whatever. So there you go. We're done here, right? Are we done here? Dude, if you're not gonna say anything next time, I'm just gonna ask you to get back in the portal. What? Wait, you're not actually gonna... Soup time!